Hey, good morning, everybody. I love the fact that uh, it's pouring rain. I know our teammates up in heaven are laughing at us right now, like delivering this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always honored to, to speak at, at, you know, I have the privilege as a speaker to be able to speak all across the country and even internationally. And, uh, you know, when, when Rick and Graham reached out to me and said, hey, would you be willing to come speak at the museum for Memorial Day? I mean, it was, it wasn't even a second thought. I mean, I can't think of a better way to spend my Memorial Day to honor teammates lost than to be here and to talk about what such a momentous day it is. Always an honor to come back here. This, this museum launched my career. When I was 16, I came here. I uh, lived about an hour and a half away. And really, most of this wasn't here. This building was different back then. And uh, so much has grown into what it is today. I want to take a moment to uh, recognize and thank our Gold Star family members. I know Jack Roulette is here. Uh, Jack, I served with Brian at SEAL Team 4. Uh, if there are any other Gold Star family members here, please rise. I'd like to recognize you and thank you. Uh, there is no greater sacrifice than to allow a loved one. So, thank you. My name is Jason Redman, and I served 21 years with the Seal Teams. I can tell you about my story, but today it's not about me. I can tell you about some of the missions that myself and my incredible teammates have been involved in, many of which garner national headlines. And while I'm sure all of you would enjoy that and you find them entertaining and fascinating, it doesn't capture the impact and the reason why we are here, why we have Memorial Day. So as I thought about it, how do I talk about SEAL teams and sacrifice on such a mon monumental day, Memorial Day? While thinking about that, I asked myself, how can we summarize Memorial Day? And I thought of these two words, sacrifice and responsibility. And these two words are why we are here. But right now, they're just words. They're words without context. And Kind of like a canvas without a painting, or in, in seal terms, like a bar without booze, or a gun without bullets. So instead of stories about battlefield conquests or war stories, I'm going to tell you a few personal stories about some of the incredible men that are etched on this wall behind me. You see, it's easy to think about sacrifice as this vague, nebulous thing. In this day and age of overwhelming information, it's easy to see or hear a name of someone who has passed and feel momentary sadness over the loss of life, but fail to truly appreciate that with that name comes this full and rich life, filled with highs and lows, love and pain, trials and tribulations, failures and successes. In the case of the men engraved on the wall behind me, there were giants among, among men. When many who come here read their names, it's merely a name. When I read most of these names of the men I knew, I see a shining light of a life well lived, of shared challenges and laughs, of hardship and pain, of sacrifice and responsibility. So today I hope to humanize some of these men, teammates, friends that I served with, so that today you can appreciate that they were more than just names. They were leaders, goal-driven, men of impact. They did things most men were unable or unwilling to do. Men like Lieutenant Michael McGreevy. Mike was a Naval Academy graduate, teammate, and friend. I served with Mike at SEAL Team 4 and watched as he set the example as a young officer. He was funny a huge reader, and a huge student of leadership. When I was selected for a commission and headed off to school, Mike came to visit me shortly before I earned my commission, and he invited me to become his assistant officer in charge. I look forward to learning from him and working with him. Mike was just an easy, natural leader. He was an amazing and great runner, 
We both found out at the beginning of our work off that our wives were pregnant. Me with my third, Mike with his first. We were both having girls and they would only be born a couple months apart. I would spend a lot of time with Mike during that work off talking about leadership and also talking about being a good father. Mike was the one who told me that he had put Tabasco sauce in his eyes to stay awake during Ranger School. So at Ranger School, I tried it. It sucked, but it worked. I stayed awake. I think my vision's been damaged ever since. By hanging out with Mike, talking about leadership, and Mike was super excited to be a dad. I remember while doing training at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, in the scorching heat of uh, the summer of 2004, We'd been in the field for almost a week doing reconnaissance training, and most of the platoon had gotten into poison ivy. Now, ticks and snakes and poison ivy are just things you have to deal with living in the woods as a seal. But poor Mike got poison ivy so bad it got all over his face and into his eyes. His face ballooned up and his eyes swelled shut so badly the instructors were worried about his eyesight. So they pulled him out of training and took him to the hospital. Doctors gave Mike some shots and told him to take a few days off to rest and recover. Mike came back to the base and he couldn't stand the thought of his platoon being out suffering in the field without him, but he also knew he needed to heal himself. So Mike McGreevy did a very Mike McGreevy thing. Driving through the night despite his swollen eyeballs and impaired eyesight, he went into town and he bought 20 pizzas around 10 p.m and then drove out into the Fort Chaffee wilderness where we were continuing to conduct our reconnaissance training. Mike got a radio, did his proper link-up procedures, and rolled into the mission's port site with 20 pizzas. I can't tell you what a morale boost and a shining example of leadership in taking care of his men. Mike would be killed less than a year later on June 28, 2005, shot down as part of the Quick Reaction Force for Operation Red Wings a lone survivor mission. I have no doubt, Mike had no reservations even up to the last minute. He was doing what he did, willing to sacrifice and save his men. Leaving behind on this wall, not just a name, but a legacy. Or take Senior Chief Colin Thomas. I served with Colin as an instructor at SEAL Team 4 when Colin was a new guy. We were conducting long range evasion training up in the mountains of Virginia. Colin and his swim buddy had been moving for several days, invading us instructors and the local sheriff's department participating in the exercise. Now, apparently Colin and his swim buddy got behind schedule, and they made the poor decision of trying to cross a four-lane highway in the National Park in broad daylight. And they were seen by several civilians who reported them to the local park rangers, who then, of course, contacted us. At the next link-up point, I had the local sheriff's office arrest Colin, and his swim buddy. They were taken to the police station where they were questioned, fingerprinted, and mug shots were taken. After sitting in jail for a few hours, they were released with valuable lessons learned. But of course, in typical SEAL fashion, somehow his platoon mates got a hold of the mug shot photos, posted them all over the team with slogans and little bubble codes that said, have you seen these men? Wanted. So Colin was furious with himself. But I watched him to go on and become a phenomenal SEAL, teammate, and brother. He would positively screen and go on to serve at SEAL Team 6, conducting high-level, high-risk missions around the world. Colin would give his life for our country in August of 2010 in Afghanistan on a mission to go after high-level terrorist leaders. I am, no sure, I, am, I, I am sure he had no doubts. Merely a steadfast conviction to take out evil men that threatened freedom in our way of life, willing to sacrifice everything for you and for me and my family. Not just a name, a legacy. Or take Lieutenant Mark Weiss. I served with Mike for several platoons when Mark was still enlisted. Mark was a great SEAL, a great sniper. He was super funny. He always had a smile on his face, even in the most intense situations. He had this crazy hyena laugh that you could hear anywhere, and you knew immediately it was Mark. Now, Mark had one major flaw. Mark was a diehard Michigan fan, and I am an Ohio State fan, which led to an intense I hope, which led to an intense rivalry and a lot of smack talk happening throughout football season, throughout the year, and all over the world. 
In June of 2007, while conducting a high-level mission in the Al Anbar province of Iraq, our team took down a multi-building target outside of Fallujah. Mark was one of our team leader leaders. We were moving up to the target. There were 11 women and children on this target, sleeping outside. We quickly pushed people to search the women and children when suddenly gunfire erupted from the rooftop. Grenades started raining down on us. At the same time, we started having uh, fire coming from buildings behind us. Two of our teammates were hit by frag, and our interpreter was severely wounded by frag in the neck and the upper body. Things continued to escalate as we moved into the house and attempted to take the roof. One of the roof team members was shot in the chest, stopped by body armor, but he killed one of the enemy fighters before being driven back, back down the stairs by this fire. As they came down, they told us the enemy had a barricaded PKM on the roof, and they were proceeding to shoot at our other team members in the other houses around this target. To say it was chaos was an understatement. I knew we needed to take out the guys on the roof who continued to shoot at us and drop grenades down on us. Mark was inside the building, I grabbed him, and we talked about how we needed to take out these fighters on the roof. My initial plan was to send our guys back up onto that roof again, but Mark stopped me. He said, Red, you can't do that, man. That is a suicide mission. And he was right. We quickly came up with an alternate plan to move our wounded, 11 women and children, and all our guys to another house about 60 yards away where we could call it an airstrike. The plan was passed, executed flawlessly. Seals shooting and moving with our wounded teammates, our interpreter, and these 11 women and children. Once we got to this next house, we brought in the uh, airstrike from the AC-130 gunship, which took out the fighters on the roof. We shot, moved, communicated, protected these women and children, all without losing a SEAL or Iraqi counterpart. As we flew away, I remember thinking how Mark had prevented me as a young leader from making a bad call. A call that could have possibly left more names on this wall. I thought about what a great SEAL and a great leader Mark was. Not unexpectedly, Mark went on to become a SEAL officer and continued to lead and set the example. And then, in November of, 2013, uh, in November of 2017, I learned Mark lost his life due to a diving mishap. I like to imagine in the end, Mark still had a smile on his face as he embraced the great unknown. The loss of Mark Weiss was a sacrifice, but his name on this wall represents his legacy. So you see, every name on this wall has a story, and that story ends with tremendous sacrifice. A sacrifice that is still felt every day by the families and teammates left behind. And every time I look at a granite wall with fallen warriors' names on it, I think to myself, why is my name not on this wall? Every one of these men were better seals than I was. Why did God take them and not me? And I can't answer that question. I can't answer why I'm still here. Why God spared me and not men like Mike McGreevy, Colin Thomas, Mark Weiss, and the dozens and dozens of other men I served with whose names grace this wall. Their families would give anything to still have them here. So when I think these things, I always come back to one word. Responsibility. We have a responsibility to live our greatest lives, to honor the sacrifice they made for all of us, to recognize the gift of freedom they were willing to give everything for. Today, I never take a day for granted. I recognize if I wake up, it's a good day. It's up to me to make it a great day. And I often think of my teammates on this wall. I have to live greatly for my teammates who no longer can. And I hope that you will do the same. Recognizing as American that the freedom we enjoy every day came at a tremendous cost. Because with every name is a story, a life well lived, a sacrifice, a legacy. But it is our responsibility to preserve it, to live greatly for it. When I was a kid, I came to this museum. Long before that beautiful building was here, long before this living granite tribute was built, I remember seeing that seal trident in there and how much I wanted to wear it. How I thought it represented badassery and awesomeness, like all rolled into one. I wanted to wear that shiny gold emblem on my chest more than anything. But as a kid, I had no clue what it truly represented. To be a SEAL or work in Naval Special Warfare takes a level of commitment that very few in this nation will ever possess. 
And to wear the trident means you have a clear understanding of what it is to lead other men into battle who also wear this insignia. Always recognizing that some of them, too many of them, may not make it home. After a 21-year career of fighting on battlefields abroad, when I look at the trident now, I know it represents sacrifice. For I have personally witnessed it adorn dozens of caskets for my teammates, and I know it humbly recognizes the tremendous responsibility to honor these men who are willing to sacrifice for the future of our freedoms. If you look at any other official U.S. insignia featuring the American Eagle, the Eagle holds its high with pride, the bows to no one. The U.S. Navy SEAL Trident is the only emblem in the U.S. military to bow its head. 31 years ago as a kid, I was too young and immature to even see the significance of the Eagle bow, much less understand it. Now I fully understand. I have felt the pain of loss endured the impact of sacrifice, witnessed the devastation and mourning by families as I tra tapped my trident into my own brother's caskets. So many men I knew, men like me who strive for excellence and sometimes fell short, who willingly entered the lion's den night after night and unfortunately at some point did not come back out. That trident to me is a symbol of ultimate sacrifice and responsibility. So on this Memorial Day, in the shadow of this powerful wall carrying the tremendous burden of naval special warfare losses, I, will, I hope you will recognize what this day truly represents, this legacy, summarized by two words, sacrifice and responsibility. And I hope you will remember that responsibility not just on Memorial Day, but every day you wake up. I'm Jason Redmond, Buds Class 202. Thank you for having me.